we resumed work in May of 2014, we had measured the necessary transmission wire and began the process of installing a conduit from the powerhouse to where we had crossed the road. With the conduit in place, we pulled the first 300 feet of wire to the powerhouse. A trench for the transmission line was dug to the house and properly bedded and buried for a total of 1,100 feet from the powerhouse to the house. When we first went up to the diversion pipe above the meadow, we discovered that the early spring melt-off had undermined part of the path we had taken to install the pipe in the fall. By early June, we found that the spring melt-off was becoming excessive and had torn the pipe apart and thrown it down the creek. The waters continued to rise and cut a new course which rapidly took out part of the hill where we had planned the pipeline to sit. As the waters rose, we decided to put in a better footbridge. This enabled us to get the culverts for the pipe bridge on the proper side of the raging waters. Iron braces were installed for support of the bridge, and the culverts were hung from the bridge support cable for the first part of the 120-foot bridge. By the middle of June, we were busy beginning the process of laying in the penstock pipe, which would run about 2,500 feet down the hill. The first 300 feet of pipeline needed to be carefully graded as it only had a fall of one eighth of an inch per foot. Eyelets and clamps were installed on the cable and the cable was rigged from massive permanent rocks to support the pipe bridge. When we examined the hillside adjoining the diversion intake area, we discovered a great deal of movement which revealed just how unstable the area for the diversion was. The hillside was slowly over years being eroded and consumed by the force of the spring snowmelt runoff. We would need to come up with another plan for diverting water to the meadow. Towards the end of the 300 foot pipe, which had a very shallow grade, we installed a fitting for an air vent that would allow any air that had collected in the pipe to escape before the grade of the penstock became far more steeply graded down the hill. A tripod would later be installed to support a flexible standing urethane pipe which would be able to withstand winter freezing. We continued the process of installing our penstock pipeline and this would continue until the end of July when we finally reached the powerhouse. The burial of the pipeline would continue throughout the month of August. The bedding of the pipe needed to be done by hand, but most of the work of burial was accomplished with the skid steer machine. At the bottom of the steepest part of the hill, we installed a thrust block to make sure there would not be any movement from pressure changes in the penstock. The idea to install a catwalk was actually an afterthought to allow us easy access to adjust the turnbuckle stringers hanging from the cable. It was fabricated from salvage I-beams which we got from a modular home being recycled. They were welded together and the process of moving such a large component up the hill and swinging it into place was quite an undertaking. We finally got it in position by flying it across the creek on the pipe cable. An added benefit of the catwalk is that it provides us an easy means to cross the creek in all seasons. Once we had completed the catwalk, we were able to install the final sections of culvert, suspending them from the cable. Now we were able to install the PVC pipeline inside the culvert and connect the full length of pipeline. It was now the end of August and we tack welded our fittings and valves for the end of the pipeline at the powerhouse. Precise alignment was needed here as we could not yet move the turbine into place. This is where the computer aided planning became very useful. In order to fill the pipeline and flush any debris left over from installation, 
we installed a rubber union at the weir which would allow us to flow the water into the intake screen with little or no leakage. Once this was done, we were ready to run our first water through the penstock. The powerhouse had now been framed and it had taken us 19 months to get to this point since we started the process. Now we had water flowing to the powerhouse and the biggest tasks had been completed. The water was flowing from the powerhouse back to rejoin the creek. We soon received the metal components of the penstock back from welding. We primer coated and painted the assembly before fitting it all together with a drain port for the lowest part of the penstock and an inspection tub to allow us access once buried. This entire assembly was braced to the slab of the powerhouse with a structure made from scrap iron and it was all interconnected with another thrust block against the slab. This is to prevent any movement of the pipe at this point where the pressure of the water will be the greatest in the pipeline. Because our power turbine was still providing power to us via the first hydro system, we fabricated and installed a pressure control unit to be able to do the testing. It would enable us to check for any problems with our design before we went through the process of moving the turbine to its new location. It was now late October of 2014, and the winter weather was setting in once again. The meadow weir, the bridge, the penstock pipeline, and the powerhouse were now completed, and everything was in place for a fresh start in the following spring. So we decided to sit back and appreciate what we had accomplished so far.